Hi, it's Dr. Adam. I hope you've been feeling well since I saw you last time. It's time for your follow-up appointment, so if you don't mind, tell me what's been going on since I saw you last. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll check your vision right now. You're familiar with the vision card, aren't you? Good. I'm gonna have you read the lowest line that you can, but cover your right eye, please. Okay, switch eyes, please. Go ahead. Good, okay. I'll have you open both eyes, read the lowest line that you can. Okay, I'm gonna enter it in real quick. It seems that the vision's getting a bit better. No headaches, no auditory changes. Okay. I'm going to put some gloves on if you don't mind, and then we'll get started. I'd like to start by getting a full set of vitals to update your chart. Is that okay with you? Great. I'm just gonna borrow your wrist here. Good. Great. Now I wanna show you on the timer here. This is a chronograph, so you'll be able to watch slowly now. See here, I'll start the timer and then with my other hand, I'll count your pulse. Three, two, and one. Good. Continuing here. Some nice, easy breathing during this time. We're halfway through. Great. And we're almost done. Just about 20 seconds remaining. And nice, deep breathing. Good. And that will be time. Great. Okay. I'm just going to replace this on my wrist here. We had a pulse that was 64 beats per minute. Very normal. And your respiratory rate I observed during that time to be about 16. And I, I know we were doing some deep breathing which can alter that, but 16 is quite normal. I would like to get a blood pressure if that's okay with you. Very good. As always, we'll slide this onto your arm. Good. Give me just one second here to put my stethoscope in. Great. Okay. And you'll feel some pressure here. A little bit difficult to take your blood pressure on that arm. I couldn't get a good reading. Do you mind if we do the other side? Okay. We'll switch the cuff here. 
put it on the other side. Okay, once more. Blood pressure today is 126 over 74. I'll take this cuff off for you. I know we've talked before, but the systolic is that higher pressure number and the diastolic is the lower. So you're a touch high today. We look for 120 over 80 or less, but we don't want to go too low and you're not too terribly high, especially since there was some I'm sure anxiety around having to redo the blood pressure, so nothing to worry about for now. Now I would like to take a look into your eyes. We'll start with the pupils, the conjunctive themselves, but since you were having some vision changes previously, we'll also look in the back of the eye today. Is that okay? Great. I already have your visual acuity in the chart now. And you were telling me, describe that symptom again. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay. Got that in there. Well, let's check your pupils now, okay? Just look straight ahead. Good. Mm-hmm. Good. While we're here, I'll check the extraocular motions. Just follow the lighted tip here. Extraocular motions are intact, which means that they're normal. They're moving appropriately. It's what we'd expect. Now I'd like to put on the ophthalmoscope or attach the head for the ophthalmoscope and get a look in the back of your eyes. I'll also be able to inspect the conjunctive at that point. Is that okay with you? Okay. Get our ophthalmoscope opened up here. This is our otoscope head, my apologies. We'll need the ophthalmoscope head. I suppose we all have our days. Good thing that I've got the ophthalmoscope head here. That's why I always like to check and make sure everything is working. Now, let's take a look in your eyes here. I'm gonna look into your right eye first. I want you to just relax and look over my shoulder. device is malfunctioning here. I'm having a hard time seeing. There we go. Okay, great. That looks good. We'll check the other side now. This looks straight ahead for me. Good. Very good. Okay. Look right into the light. Okay, excellent. 
Your exam's consistent. Normal optic cup to disc ratio. I don't see any hemorrhages. In the actual external conjunctive, I'd like to inspect a little bit more closely. We'll just get this closed back up. Excellent. I'm just going to take a look here. Pulling down on the lid. Okay, let's see in here a bit better. Okay, good. No evidence of foreign bodies. Good, that looks good. Check this side here. Good. That's great. Okay, very good. I don't see any signs of foreign bodies. Now, if the sensation continues, we can do a stain and look with what's known as a Woods lamp. That's a UV lamp and it will let us see any signs of a corneal abrasion or damage to the outside surface of the eyeball. That's an option, but I don't think we have to go there for today. Now, for now, I'd like to take a listen to your heart first. Is that okay with you? Okay. Now I will need to take a listen to your lungs as well, if that's okay with you. Great. And a deep breath in through your nose. And out through your mouth. Good. Deep breath in through the nose. And out through your mouth. Good. And deep breath in through the nose. And out through your mouth. Deep breath again, in through your nose. And out through your mouth. You need to take a listen to your lungs on the back as well. Deep breath in through the nose. And out through the mouth. Deep breath in through the nose. And out through the mouth. Deep breath in through the nose. And out through the mouth. One more. Deep breath through the nose. And out through the mouth. Okay. Well, I don't want you to get worried, and that's why we do follow-up visits like this, but I do hear some irregular lung sounds on the right side. Now, I'm not sure what to make of that. It could be a lot of things. It could also be absolutely nothing. I'm going to hold off on having you listen for now because I don't want to create any anxiety. This happens all the time, but we should get a chest x-ray to look further into it. I'm going to enter that on the computer right now. For now, the good thing is that your breathing is not a problem. I'm going to add on a pulse oximeter right now. And what I would like to do is just get your oxygen saturation to make sure I'm not missing something. I'll borrow your finger. Good. And I'll leave that on. Let it take a reading while I'm entering some notes. Oh. Great. Normal oxygen level as well. This is likely nothing, but we'll be cautious and we'll get an x-ray. Is that an okay plan with you? Great. We'll probably need to get some blood work as well, so I'll order that and you can get it all done at the same time. Do you have any questions? Okay. I've got you in for your follow-up appointment. Be sure to hit subscribe so that you get a reminder, and don't forget to make it to our follow-up appointment next week. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, Mom, I'll be back now. Let me call you back. I'm sorry. Hey, are you okay? Come, come in, come in, come to my office. 
Let's help us stand up here. We'll get you taken care of. Come on. Come this way. I know. Oh, look at that. All right, come on now. I'm helping you. Let's go. Just through here. And we'll get you situated. Let me get a second to change. Hi there. I'm Dr. Adam. This is my office here at Dr. Adam ASMR. I understand that you fell out there. I'm sorry I found you like that. Um, and I apologize, I'm not in scrubs or my normal attire for work. I wasn't seeing patients today. It was purely a paperwork day. But obviously, it looks like you need some help today, and I'm happy to help out. I'm going to open a chart for you, if you don't mind. Could you tell me your name? It's nice to meet you. Your date of birth? Very good. We'll collect the rest of the demographic information when you check out. Why don't you go ahead and tell me what happened today? I'm sorry to hear that. I see. Very sorry to hear that. I'm going to make some notes. You weren't having any chest pain before you fell? Okay. And no shortness of breath? Okay. This sounds to me like you're describing a mechanical fall. We may need to get some x-rays, but I'd also like to be cautious and do some screening tests. Now, one reason you can fall is from a low blood sugar. Would it be okay with you if I checked your blood sugar? Okay. Very good. Okay. Just going to put some gloves on and we'll get that blood sugar. Okay. I'll just clean your finger here first. Good. Okay, and now a small poke. Good. We'll use the monitor here. So pressure. Normal sugar, and I'll just get the blood off of there. Good, just hold like this, just hold your hand like that. Very good, okay. Now, I'll borrow your other hand here. We're going to get a pulse reading here to start getting some vital signs. This will give me your oxygen as well. If there was something like a pulmonary embolism, you'd be expected to have a low oxygen saturation and also a fast heart rate, so. I'd be able to tell by using this pulse oximeter to start to get some of the vitals. So I'll put your finger in here if that's okay. Great. Okay. And we'll let this do its job here. It just takes a few moments to get a reading. Are you feeling okay since you'd fallen? Good. I want to give you some medicine to help with the soreness. Uh, do you have any past medical problems or any history? Mm-hmm. No liver problems? Okay. And no kidney problems? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll put in a medication that I'll be able to give to you shortly. It should help with some of your soreness. Good. And this looks like 100% here. And a heart rate of 65. So, not likely any type of pulmonary embolism causing you to fall. Now, to complete our set of vitals, I would like to get a blood pressure. I'll just take a manual blood pressure today since we don't have the staff here to set up the automatic machine. Is that okay with you? Okay. You've likely seen these blood pressure cuffs before, so we'll just slide this onto your arm. Good. Tighten that on. And of course, this is known as a sphygmomanometer, and so we'll just be using this to track the pressure inside your arteries. So, give me one moment here to get set. 
Okay. Great. normal blood pressure. Let me take this off and I'm happy to tell you. Good. Blood pressure is 124 on 78, so all things considered and what's going on today, that's very normal. Okay? Good. That's a normal set of vitals. Uh, I'd like to do first a musculoskeletal exam. Now, obviously, you fell, and I know you injured some things, so I want to make sure we're ordering the right x-rays. First thing I'd like you to do is place your arms out straight, just like this, and bend towards you. Good. And extend away. Good. I want you to bend back up towards you, and take your arms out to the side, and bring them towards the middle. Good. Now come down, and push your elbows back behind you. Good. Bring them forward. Good. Bring them back about halfway. Now lift them out to the side. Good. And just above 90 degrees. Very good. Good. I'm going to do the same now, but I'm going to resist you. So I'll have you push out against my hands. Good. Nice and strong. And pull back. Oh, good. Good. That's good. Lift out to the sides. Good. And push in towards yourself. Good. Okay. Very good. Your strength seems to be intact in your upper extremities. That's a good thing. Uh, I'd like to test sensation, so for this I'll have you close your eyes, just like this, and I will touch on your upper extremity, either the right or left, upper or lower portion of your arms, and I'd like you to tell me where I'm touching. Okay? Great. Here? That's correct. Here? Very good. Here. Good. Here. Good. That all seems normal. I'm not sure if you've ever seen a reflex hammer like this. It's made of rubber, so there's nothing to be worried about with this, but it'll allow me to check your reflexes, and I'd like to do that to make sure that we're not missing anything. Although you have normal strength and sensation, we should check those reflexes. Is that okay with you? Okay. Just relax your arm for me. Good. And you'll feel some pressure here. Good. Good. Normal triceps. And we'll do the brachioradialis. Looks good. Good. We'll come on the other side now. Just relax your arm. Good. Good. Normal triceps. It's a normal brachioradialis as well. Happy to report that your musculoskeletal and neurovascular exam is normal in the upper extremities. Given that it's a normal neurovascular exam, we need to add the vascular component as well, though. So I'm going to check pulses at both of your radial arteries. Is that okay? Okay. I'll borrow both of your wrists, and you just relax. This time you can take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Very good. Good. Excellent. Very good. I will now move on to your lower extremities. I'd like to check the strength there. So the first thing I'll have you do is lift your legs up at the hips, so bringing your knee up towards the ceiling. Good. And the other side. Good. Go ahead and extend, I'll move out of your way, go ahead and extend your leg out. So straighten your legs. Good. And here. Okay, very good. Good. You can relax. I'd like you to lift your foot up and then down, point your toes down. 
Good, good. We'll duplicate that now against resistance. I'll have you push up against my hand. Good. I'm going to slide my hand underneath. Go ahead and push down. Good. And push up here. Good. And pull down. Good, good. Okay. Go ahead and kick both legs out for me. Yep. Oop, that's good. Very good. Pull back towards you. Yep. Okay. Good, good. And lift those le the feet up. Good. Press down like you're pressing on the gas. Good. Good. That all seems normal. Now, once again, I'm going to test your sensation. Now, since it looks like you have an injury to that right knee, I'm going to test both sharp and dull. Now, for sharp sensation, you can see here the end of this is a bit sharp as it pulls on the glove. It's not hurting me, but it's sharper than the dull sensation here. So uh, I'll test both. I'd like you to tell me sharp or dull and where you feel that. Okay. Good. Mm, that's correct. That is sharp. And this? Yes, it's dull. Mm -hmm. It is sharp. Where do you feel it? Good, good. And how about down here? That's dull. Good. How about here? Mm -hmm. Sharp. And where was that? Good. Up here. Good. That is dull. Exactly. Where is that? Good. Oh, and just remember to keep your eyes closed for me. Good. Very good. Okay. Here. Mm -hmm. Good. And here. We're going to check those reflexes of the patella now. Good. Normal. Good. And I'm going to check the Achilles here. Good. As we expect. And here. Well, it seems like from a neurovascular standpoint, everything's intact. But once again, we need to check the pulses. So I'm going to check the dorsalis pedis pulse on both of your feet. Okay? Great. And you can just take a deep breath in through your nose. And out through your mouth. Good. And I don't want you to be alarmed. It takes a little bit longer to find this pulse. It's a little bit challenging in the feet. Another deep breath. Good. You're doing a great job. There we go. Good. Those feel entirely normal. Well, so far, from a musculoskeletal perspective, it seems like everything's moving appropriately. Your knee does look a little bit swollen, though, and I'm not going to be able to tell if it's broken or not just by looking at it from the outside. So I do think either way, we'll need to get some x-rays, but I want to complete our exam first, and we absolutely need to look at your head and neck because you were a little bit woozy, and I'm not sure if you hit your head or not. Now, I'd like to press on the back of your neck. Is that okay with you? Okay. Can you tell me if it hurts in the center of your neck here? Good. No pain at all? Okay. What I'd like you to do is slowly, with me, look towards the left and then towards the right. Good. Up and then down. Did you have any discomfort doing that? Okay. Now we use clinical decision tools to help us decide who needs imaging after some type of an accident or injury. You're able to move your neck well without any pain or pain in the center of your neck. So that's a good sign that this probably isn't a bone, a broken bone or, you know, something concerning like that. I think it's most likely muscle strain that's causing your discomfort. So I don't think we need to get a CT scan of your head or neck today, especially since you're saying you didn't lose consciousness. But we'll continue our exam. I want to look in your ears, nose, mouth to make sure I'm not missing something. Okay? Great. We'll get our kit ready, which has our otoscope right here. And this will 
allow us to take a look in your ears, which is where I'll start, if that's okay with you. Great. You just relax and look straight ahead. Okay, looking behind your ear first here, there's signs of trauma or bruising, and you don't see any clear discharge, which would be concerning for CSF week. Good. A little pressure looking inside the ear here. Good. Okay. Clear, no blood behind the tympanic membrane, which is a sign of trauma. We'll come to the other side. Okay, now also back of the ear looks okay. A little bit of pressure. Good, that looks normal. Clear tympanic membrane as well. Very good. Okay, I'll change the tip here. Good, now. I would like to take a look in your mouth as well. So if you could open up for me, say ah. Uh -huh. Good. Good, very good. And look up a little bit. I'm going to take a look in your nose. Okay. Having a bit of a hard time seeing in there. Um, I have a nasal speculum I'd like to use if that's okay. a great question and I'm happy to show you. It's nothing to be concerned about here. Uh, this is this the speculum here and it's very small and it just allows a passageway for me to pass the otoscope through just like this so that I'm able to see more clearly inside the nose. Okay? All right. Well, a little pressure here. Good. Much better. No signs of a septal hematoma. We'll go the same here. Good. Just relax. Fogging up there. Let me have you take a deep breath in and hold it. On three. One, two. And hold. Good. It's also clear. You can relax and exhale. Okay. Now. I'm going to use my pen light next, which we have here. And I'd like to evaluate your cranial nerves as well as checking your pupils. Okay? Very good. Have you looked straight ahead? Right ahead. Good. Okay. Eyes look healthy. The pupils are equal and reactive. Now I'm going to have you follow the tip here um, and just follow with your eyes only. Okay? Good. Good. Everything seems to be moving fine. Uh, can you raise your eyebrows up for me? Good. Smile. Good. Puff your cheeks out. Good. And one more time, tongue straight out. Say ah. Good. Uvula looks midline. I'll check your hearing briefly. Have you close your eyes? Good. Now with your eyes closed, which side do you hear the sound? To be thorough, I'd like to just listen to your heart and lungs briefly, and then I'll talk about what imaging studies will get done next. It's okay with you? Great. Okay. I'll take a listen to your heart first. Good. 
everything sounds very healthy. I'm going to take a listen to your lung now. Um, lungs, I should say plural for both sides, but I'll have you take a deep breath through your nose, in, and then out. Okay? Good. Okay. Deep breath in through the nose, and out. Good. Once again, in through the nose, and out. Good. In through the nose. And out. Great. In through the nose. And out. That's very good. I know it's been an eventful day for you here, and I'm going to put in some orders to the computer in terms of testing for you here. I've put in some imaging for your knee. now. I do want to follow up with you next week on this, so if you could click on that subscribe button to make sure we don't miss our follow-up appointment, and give this video a thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate it. We'll finish getting you registered on your way out, and again, I apologize I'm not in my normal attire. I didn't expect to see you in the stairwell today. I hope that you feel better, and again, use the medication as we talked about. We'll follow up after your x-rays next week on Dr. Adam ASMR. Hi, and welcome back to Dr. Adam ASMR. Today we're going to be meeting for our weekly exam and going over some of your health details. I understand there's been some changes. We're going to take a look at your vision today. I'll do an exam on your eyes and, of course, we'll check your vision with the vision chart. Does that sound okay with you? Okay. Now, first thing, as always, I would just like to do some vitals. Now, sometimes things like high blood pressure can affect your vision, so that's why I'd like to check that today. Now, if it's okay with you, I'll put some gloves on, and we'll start out with your heart rate and respiratory rate. Excellent. You just sit back and relax, and I'll go ahead and start monitoring your vitals here. Good. Just going to keep an eye on the clock here, get an accurate count. And if you'd like, you can do some nice slow breathing, whatever you need. Good. I'm still feeling here. I'm going to Grab the pulse oximeter device. There we are. Great. Still counting that pulse. We'll get ready with your oxygen saturation here. Good. You can relax. We're going to place your finger in just like this. Okay. So nothing to be concerned about here. Your finger will go just like that. Okay, I'll borrow your finger here. Good. You just relax your finger and your hand. Good. Great. Take that off your finger. Reading is 100% saturation. Your pulse today is normal, 65. Again, counting for that whole minute lets us get very accurate. And your respirations are normal, as always a bit slow because you're just doing some deep breathing. So that's normal. Now, I do need to get a blood pressure because, as I mentioned, that is a component. Now, I'm going to use our automated blood pressure machine today. So we'll put the cuff on, but you won't see me physically pumping that up. I'm going to push start, and I'll do some documentation while the machine gets a blood pressure for us. Sound okay? Great. Go ahead and let me have your arm here. I'm going to put the cuff on. Good. Okay, now just relax, rest your arm, and I'll click begin here. Good. It looks like the cuff is almost done. I know it gets tight there. I'm sorry about that. Okay, there's our pressure. 
Yeah, it's not particularly high. It's 122 over 82. So I've got that entered. I'll take the cuff off now. Feel it just slide down your arm there. Good. So that's reassuring. Uh, your blood pressure is likely not what's going on today. Now, one of the things we may need to do is check the pressures in your eyes today. Now, I don't want you to get too concerned about that, but I want you to know that it's something that may be coming your way. So first thing I'll have you do is just try and relax. A nice deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Great. I want to start with some palpation to make sure there's no adenopathy or anything that we might be missing. Okay? Great. Okay, I'll just kind of palpate behind the ears, down the back of the neck, down the submandibular space underneath your chin and jaw here, and down the anterior cervical chain on the neck, and then into the clavicular space here, supraclavicular space, no nodes. That all feels very normal. Now, you're probably familiar with the eye chart here. So what I'll do is hold this out by me and just ask you with your left eye closed to read the lowest line that you can. Mm -hmm. CFJDH, is that what you said? That is, okay, it was hard to hear you. Yep, that's 2025. Let's check the other eye here. You see that okay? That's right. L-T-F-P-H. That's 2020. Great. Let's use both eyes now, and we'll take a look here. Good. Great. Did you get that? Excellent. Let me just record those results. Now. Let's get right into that exam of your eyes, since that's the primary reason why you're here. First thing I'd like to do is inspection. Take a look with our ophthalmoscope. Here we are. Go ahead and attach these two. Great. Now, you're probably familiar with this exam. Uh, we've done this before, but today I'm going to put some drops in your eyes to numb your eye and dilate your eye. That way I can see better in the back and also I can get accurate pressures on your eye. The pressures will be like a small tapping from a sterile device that can measure the pressure inside the eye. Is that all okay with you? Okay. The only part that's uncomfortable is the drops going in. After that, your eye will be completely numb. Is that all right? Okay. Go ahead and look up towards the ceiling. I'm just gonna put the drops in by your nose. And let those run down into your eyes there. Good, very good. I'll let that sit for just a moment as it's going to start feeling more numb. Good, I'm sure you could feel there was a little burn there, but it should be getting better. I'm gonna do an exam now on your eyes and I'd just like you to look over my right shoulder to start, okay? Great. Have you look right over my shoulder here? Okay. And we'll start our exam. Good. With the eye dilated, I can actually see much more. Normal optic cup, cup to disc ratio back there. That looks good. And good. Okay. Yeah, I don't see any signs of trauma or iritis. Good. I'm just going to take a look at the conjunctiva here. Good, that all looks healthy. Let's check the other eye now. I'll have you look over this shoulder. Great, and we'll come in here. Good. And just 
looking around. No optic cup to disc. Good. Great. Okay. Does I have a trauma there? I'm going to do the same, just checking for anything in the conjunctiva here. Good. That all looks healthy. Uh, from a eye exam perspective, that all looks good. Well, you did well with the vision chart, and your eye exam, while we have you dilated, was normal. What I need to do now is check the pressure in your eyes. Checking the pressure uses a small device that's going to touch the eye and be able to sense the actual pressure in millimeters of mercury inside the globe of your eye. I want to assure you that your eye is numb. And if you feel anything uncomfortable, just raise your hand and let me know and we can put more numbing medicine. Sound fair? Okay. This device is known as a tono pen. I'll be using the tono pen to take the pressure. So I'll have you just look straight ahead at me and try to relax. I'm going to hold your eye open here. Good. And you'll just see me tapping the device here. It may feel strange. It's just lightly tapping against your eye. Good. Good. Now check the pressure here. There's my reading. 12. Very good. I'll check the other side now. I'm going to switch hands here. Hold your eye open. Good. Okay. I know it can feel a little blurry with it that close. It takes a couple readings and we get the average here. 14. So, those are entirely normal eye pressure readings. If they were high, I would be concerned about things such as glaucoma, or even in some cases of trauma, bleeding behind the eye. But I don't think that's what's going on today. So that's good news. Okay. Now, we've done a large majority of the portion of our eye exam. There's one thing left that I'd like to do, and that's to stain your eye with fluorescein. Now, fluorescein allows me to look for corneal abrasions or damage to the surface of the eye. Your eye's already numb, so this won't be painful. And I'll just need to use a special lens for this. It's got a blue light filter on it. Is that okay with you? Okay. Here's the paper. I'm just gonna have you close your eye. Good, I'll put it on both sides here. And your eye just pulls the dye off of that a little bit. Now I'm going to dim the lights a bit. And in doing so, you're gonna notice a bit of blue color coming from the pen light here, okay? Again, it's going to be a bit more blue. Good. 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 Okay. I'll turn the lights back up here. You doing okay? Great. I didn't see any corneal abrasions, so there's no sign of increased pressure. There's no problems in the back of the eye. The visual acuity looks good, and we don't have any signs of trauma, so everything is reassuring. Now, I would like to be thorough and take a listen to your heart and lungs, make sure there's not an irregular rhythm that could be potentially flicking off clots, causing problems. I don't think that's the case today, but I like to be thorough. Is that okay? Great. Let me just take a listen to your heart here first. Do me a favor, I'd like you to squeeze your hands as hard as you can. Go ahead, squeeze. Mm -hmm. Good, good, you can relax. The next thing that I'd like you to do is turn your head like this and you'll take a deep breath in 
and hold it. Allow me to listen to your carotid arteries. Is that okay? Great. Okay. Turn your head for me. Deep breath in and hold. Good. You can relax. Do one more for me. A deep breath in and hold. Good. You can relax. Excellent. That all sounds very normal. I don't hear any irregularities, and I didn't feel any irregularities earlier when I palpated your pulse. Now, to be thorough, I would like to listen to your lungs. I know that you do this all the time, but it's just going to be actually two lung fields today. I don't think the lungs are the primary problem, but I do want to check both. And then I need to check your extraocular motions. I forgot to do that while I was looking at your eyes, and it's something that could cause some vision changes. So let me take a listen to your lungs, and then we'll get back to the eye motions. Deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Good. In through the nose and out through the mouth. Good. That sounds clear and normal. Now, normally, I would let you take a listen, but again, this is a normal lung exam today, and I know you said you have an appointment after this, so I don't want to keep you any longer than we need to. I'm glad we were able to get you in for this. Now, I'm going to check your extraocular motions, and before I do that, I do want to remind you that if you want to have more than just your weekly appointment, you'd like to see me more often, you will want to check out the link down below to our Patreon, where we have additional videos and content. But either way, let's continue with your eye exam. Take a look at my pen light here. Can you see that? Great. Follow the pen light here. Good. Good. Doing great. Good. Great. You did a great job with that. I'm just going to check your eyes here. This is just a quick evaluation for strip business, and then, of course, swinging flashlight test to look at those pupils and make sure they're reacting appropriately, which they, of course, are. Now there's one other thing that I would like you to do for today. It's part of the neuro exam. Balance can affect our vision, and I'd like to test your cerebellum. What I'm gonna ask you to do is put your finger on your nose. Then you'll reach out and touch my finger as far out as I place it, and you go back to your nose. For example, it would be finger to nose, back to finger. Now, I'll have you do that to touch my finger. Ready? Go ahead and put your finger on your nose and touch my finger out here. Good. Up here. Good. Out here. Good. And then down here. Good. And once more up here. Good. And over here. Good. Now I'd like you to do that with your other hand. Go ahead and switch hands. Great. Okay. Touch my finger down here. Good. Finger up here. Good. Come out here. Put your finger up there and back to your nose. And once more down here. Good. Once more in the center. Down here. Great. Okay, that is a normal finger, nose, finger test. Now, I'm just going to update some of the documentation here. I haven't found any cause for the symptoms that you're having, so I think it's important we have you follow up next week. And again, if you feel like you'd like to see me more often, you can click down below. There's a link to the Patreon where you're able to not only support Dr. Adam ASMR, but also get additional content. Thank you for making your scheduled appointment.
Be sure to like this video, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next week at your appointment.